Since we already center punched those holes, kind of to match it, so I'm just going to use the drill press to drill. It's going to take me a little bit, so how about I bring you back after we get done here. Okay, I went ahead and drilled and tapped these two holes here, uh, but I kind of wanted to tell you how I did it is I took and bolted this on the golf cart. So it's actually sitting somewhere in that area. And then what I did is I took this, laid it over top, and then I had a one inch rod that I put in here. Whenever I did that then, I laid this on top of this, and then waited till I got level, and then marked my holes. So this is putting the carburetor perfectly level when it's all assembled here. So, let's put the studs in and see how, how we did here. I'm just using the vice grips to grab a hold of the studs because of a little bit small so this should fit on and look at that fits right on there so then the carburetor should fit on and it does so there you go now it's all the basically hogging some material off of this to get it uh, down to somewhat looking like this it's not going to look exactly the same because you can see the orientation of the carburetor is totally different. So I'm going to go ahead and scribe, scribe around this. And then some of this material we'll go ahead and remove. And we have to watch too because of the taper. You know, we don't want to hog a lot of this material away because we're going to end up eating into the side there. And then once we do that, we're basically done other than welding it back up, which I'd rather not do that if I can, of course. But, uh... Well, let's uh, get started on getting some of this material hogged off of this. So I figured I would get this angle cut in quick. And I'm not going to, you know, figure out the angle and stuff. So all I did was use a couple parallels and then, you know, lined it up to the line. And then just eyeballed it. And you can see it's close. It's close enough for what this is going to be. So with that said, let's start cutting on it. Alright, I think we're to the line. I'm going to get a file here and knock that edge off. Yeah, we are to the line. I figured we were. And there's nothing that will interfere on this. Um, anyway, so if it is a little bit longer, it's not going to hurt anything. Um, 
So we're going to call this side uh, done. And then I'm going to start running the chamfer bit. And we're going to get all the sides chamfered in. Okay, the rounds are put in, um, and I usually don't worry about it. I usually touch it right here, a little bit right here, um, but I usually use the belt sander and kind of smooth it the rest of the way. But you see, it's starting to look kind of like it should. It's the, uh, cutting all this material out is going to be an issue, but we're going to do what we can. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, I was thinking about this piece last night, and I think I'm going to go ahead and start cutting this one out on the inside here. I wanted to point out, these are the type of cutters you should be using for aluminum. Uh, they do have the other finer ones. They're just deburring tools. They have these as well. These are usually meant for steels. Uh, if you use them for aluminum, you can use them. Just spin them slower. That way they don't clog up because that's the problem with these is they'll clog up really fast with aluminum and that's why you need the coarser one so whenever you're doing this kind of stuff it is very strongly recommended to have safety glasses hearing protection and then i'm going to put an apron on too so let's get started here and uh i will tell you this makes a mess Okay, I got uh, all my PPE on. Uh, we're ready to get started. I'm gonna bring you in a little closer so see what's going on here. As you can see, it's gonna take me a little bit of time here and it's uh, making one heck of a mess. Uh, I'm gonna try to get a line from this to that and then uh, start smoothing it out from there. So I'll just keep at it. Okay. I think I'm going to continue on with this uh, and I'll bring it back whenever I'm almost done. Just to give you an idea where I'm at, uh, it actually looks pretty good. If you compare it to the other one over here too, you can see it's pretty similar. So I'm going to use a, a flap disc, go in here and kind of smooth this out and uh, probably call it done. All right, here's the progress of it. Uh, I use just a regular flap disc here and uh, a smaller one. This one's about wore out. But you can see it smoothed it out inside real nice. Um, and honestly, it's smoother than what this one here was, so we're going to leave it alone. And now we're going to start working on the outside here getting this uh all this material removed on that so it's starting to look pretty good okay i'm over here at the mill again i'm still trying to figure out how i wanted to cut you know the, a lot of this material off i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut this flat line first so i kind of did the same thing i did before as i used to couple parallels and eyeballed it for flatness and then I also scribed some lines on the back side here for depth um, the depth's not crazy critical so this is a ball end mill so whenever I get down there it'll give me a nice radius down there in that bottom so I'm not sure if this is the way to do it 
so far it's the only way I can think of doing it. So we'll give it a shot and see what happens. This is measuring about 520. So we'll go ahead and measure this. And this is right at six right now. So I didn't think we had a whole lot to come off yet. Okay, we should be to depth. We're uh, about eight thousand over, which isn't really that much, but we'll go ahead and finish cut it at eight thousand. So. Yeah. There we are. Okay, uh, you might have been wondering why I took two depths of cut. Um, main reason why is because I was running out of flutes up here. So this don't look too bad. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn it and we're going to cut this angle and then this angle. But I'm going to get the vacuum here and clean up first. Okay, I got the part flipped. Uh, we're going to go ahead and cut this line into it now.
Okay, you can see it blended in pretty nice. Um, you can feel it, but barely. So now we'll get it flipped and we'll cut this side. I'm going to try one of these old methods that I learned years ago. Um, this piece is kind of difficult to make to make it look like the original. So what I'm going to do, instead of getting the rotary table and stuff out, is I'm just going to rotate the block a little bit, cut, a little bit, cut, and I'm just going to eyeball this line. And then eventually I'm going to cut to this line down to wherever this line here meets the base there. It'll look close, and then after it's sanded and polished, it'll be fine. So I think that's what I'm going to do. It's kind of a tedious process. So I'm probably just going to go ahead and do it, then uh, bring you back after I get it uh, all cut out. So hold tight. I tried to do the thing and rock it around the vise. You see me trying to do that. It just got too difficult. Um, you know, and I'm going to probably like sand some of this out anyway, but I figured I have the rotary table, so why not give it a shot? What, what, you know, what could it hurt? So we're going to give this a shot and see how it does. So all we're going to do is rock from basically this point to this point. We got to decide how far in we want to cut. We're about an eighth inch off of our line now, and uh, you know we got to watch being getting thin down here. So I think I'm going to stop there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and cut this in. So what we're going to do is just bring this out, we'll drop the bit down, and then round this to make it match. So there you have it. So now that this is all done, I'm going to do everything else by hand. Um, and all I'm going to do is taper this line down to here.
Okay, I just wanted to bring you over here and show you. Here's the, uh, the intake manifold that I've been working on. And you can see it, it don't look too bad. I took in, uh, after I ground it down with the burring bit, I used a sanding pad and then one of them three um, um, scotch bright pads and kind of buffed it up and cleaned it up. So it don't really look too bad. So if you want to compare the old to the new, there you go. You can see that, you know, the orientation of the carburetors in different and um, that's what we was after. You look at the back side, it looks almost identical from the back. So this project's pretty much done. Uh, there's one last piece I gotta do, and that's this hole up here. There's supposed to be a hose bar put in there, and that's for the fuel pump. So that's the last thing that I gotta do, and then this thing is uh, ready to go on. Until next time, take care.